Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, I carry on making little bronze pieces for steam engines. Um, I do some plasma cutting. I think I make a stainless steel uh, hexagonal nut with uh, like, like a castellated nut, which takes it didn't take a lot of time, which is interesting. There's quite a few different processes involved in the manufacture of that. This is the first Sunday of the month, so it's time for the monthly draw, and I'm going to do a little short video after tonight's nightcaps. The next part of the valve to make is the actual little valve itself. That goes in there and it's held off the seat by a small spring. It's quite a slack fit in there, but there's a lot of wear on it. That's obviously that, that'll spin with the, the steam going onto it and it's actually worn away. So I'll make it a slightly better fit than that in my valve. That's a half inch hole in there. That's a 45 degree seat we need to cut on there. So we'll do this bit first, that diamond that, and then cut that seat. And then we'll have to figure out how we're going to machine those parts into it. The valve seat is 45 degrees, so we'll set the compound slide to 45 degrees. That's better. Put a blue on there. Right, all the way around. I'm going to grind the valve in anyway, but that's a good indication that we're, we're very, very near. So now we the machine the flats in there. Or the machine those cutouts in there. It's a miller machine job, possibly a rotary table, I'm not sure. A lot of wear on that valve. Of course it is, 90 year old I suppose. 
I've decided to use a six headed collar block to do this which means I can obviously split it and do it into three which is what that is I have got a dividing head with a chuck I could use that but not everybody's got a one so I thought I'll do it using the collar blocks just to show how versatile these can be right, so I've got a physical stop on there so once I machine the groove into there I can simply take it out turn it round back in onto that stop and it's in exactly the same position so it can do the three I don't think it's critical as long as there's clearance there for the steam and water to get through so I'll select the mill and cutter that's going to give me roughly that profile and then we'll have a go at it So I'll set that cutter so it's just slightly above there, it's in the centre, so we'll give it a whirl and see what happens. I'll touch it off first then set to zero. Zero there. Looking good. I'm certainly replicating what I've got here. Going for three nil. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. That looks uh, that looks good. So now we need to move it two flats up against the stop again and that's in exactly the same place so a two wheel in there I'll bring the camera on so you can get a better view of it Exactly the same for the last one, and I'm, uh, I'm very happy with this. The results look good. I think I want to go a little bit deeper which is not a problem to make, make them all 4 mil. That'll 
Costello. Dragon, but basically it's going to do the job. It's back in the lathe now. It's lovely. Now I need to part it off to that length. Change the collars, put a smaller one in. I'm sure the grip on that quite nicely. Just to do the final little reface on here and then use the collar block once again to finish the machining off. Right, so I've got the same collet, this time in a square collet block. Doesn't need a greater pressure out than I've done. A fantastic amount to it. I need to put a slot through there first and find the centre. This melon cut as the smallest one I've got, it's a real miserable thing. I don't know what it's left expecting she's going to be, but all we can do is give it a try. Just going to eyeball the centre, I've got a nice little snub there that I left when I 
that's good see the almost put in with a fail so <coughs> Touch this off. I've got this running fast. I think it's three north thousands as fast as it'll go. And I have got some safety goggles on because this cutter doesn't really want to survive this. So we'll put a little bit of a cut on. Really, really gently. Next has these four grooves to go in. So I want it so it's just gonna miss the edge of that, which that looks pretty good there. Right one, we'll touch this off. Now I could move this around and do the other side, but a simple way, when I've got the corner block in, it's just simply turn it, one half turn, and it should do the other side. I should do this in one go, one pass. 1.2 mil, I'll take it out. Really gently feeding it in. Again, we're going to turn it so it's 90 degrees this time up against the stop. Some little notches in the corners there. I'm just gonna 
machine them out carefully. the end of the friggin' tool. Bollocks! You clumsy twat, John! Right, so that's a little valve in place. I'm just going to put a little touch of fine grinding paste on here and just lap it in. Beautiful, nice, light grey seat all the way around. See them on the valve, see whether it's cut the new seat. Beautiful. That part there's taking me roughly an hour and a half to make, that's including filming it. So I do want to talk rations twice, but it's a very, very satisfying thing we've made. Nobody will see it, I know it's there, but I'll see it now, I know it's there, so. I'll get a little needle file and just knock some of these little rags off and then that's one more part made some little stainless steel springs to fit in there next. I might as well lap this one in I've got it here and I've got the gear on the job. Slot slightly smaller more than this one it would be wouldn't it? See how there they're uneven, so that's been they've been hand filed them without a doubt. Right, oh, you bastard! That was lucky. Do that again. Spot on. Nice seat all the way around. Same on the valve. So that's my version of it. The same but probably slightly different. And I found some little stainless steel springs. This should do the job. It may need shortening to take some of the weight of it. But we'll have to make sure when we screw it in that there's clearance between this and whatever stops it coming right out. That'll be governed by the thickness of washer in there. So normally it would sit something like that and the steam would bleed through there, just trickle through. Then when you press the brake, the steam power, the power of the steam hits that, whacks it shut and operates the, the cylinder, puts a brake on. So simple, uh, just simple, nothing to go wrong with it. Happy, very happy.